I've been waiting for it my entire life. Magnus Carlsen has used our dirty opening trick to defeat his strong grandmaster in nearly 10 moves. Let's have a look. Carlsen was playing white against Jigalka, a fairly strong grandmaster and really good blitz player who was playing black. Carlsen opens up with the move pawn e4, black responds pawn c5, knight of 3, knight c6, the Sicilian defense, so far so good. And here, if you think about this position and you ask somebody what's the worst move to play, there could be a couple candidates and one of them is probably the move pawn b4, which looks completely ridiculous. You're like you're giving up the pawn for no reason and black even has a choice of whether to capture it with a pawn or a knight. So that looks like a completely dumb mistake. But of course it's not when Carlson plays it. And the trick here is that although this gambit is known for some years, uh, around 10 years ago I recorded a three-part video series about this. And at the time there were only a handful of games played with this gambit and pretty much nobody knew that it even exists. And after I recorded those three-part video series, which gained over 100,000 uh, views, something like that, I see that the variation started to kick in and get tra gain traction and more and more people played. And now we see that Magnus Carlsen is using it. So who knows, maybe he's secretly watching and learning our dirty opening tricks. Of course, it could be a co coincidence, but I hope so. <laughs> so after pawn takes, we go pawn d4. And now black starts seeing the reason of the gambit. Uh, with the move pawn d4, white builds up this strong pawn center and also we're threatening to play d5, attacking and driving this knight away. And there is no other comfortable way for black to stop white from pushing pawn forward but to push the pawn forward themselves by playing pawn d5. After an exchange, looks like black is completely in control but white keeps attacking with another move pawn c4, attacking the queen, forcing it to go. Although black could take on Poisson, they didn't, because if pawn takes, uh, white recaptures with the knight and keeps attacking, and we're gonna look at this variation in a moment, but for now let's just come back into the game. Uh, black decided to just remove their queen with a, with a tempo, and black played queen e4, check to the king. White played bishop e3, and uh, it may be hard to believe, but black is already on the brink of disaster, because the d5 is coming here, this queen also gives white some extra temples for the moves like bishop d2 or knight to d2 or bishop to d3, and the white's attack here is so quick and easy and natural, and there is really nothing black can oppose, so that, that already makes black's position nearly losing, but anyway, let's see what happens. Black played a normal development move, knight of 6, white played bishop d3, gaining a tempo, attacking this queen, the queen went away, there is not much choice, queen g4 is forced, and Carlson played d5, gaining another tempo, attacking this knight. Uh, Jigalka played knight to b8, uh, ju just for a second I'll mention that queen takes g2 does not really help black, because although it attacks the rook, but white can remove it with a tempo, attacking the queen, and once the queen goes away, white picks up the knight on c6, winning mature all, so that doesn't work for black. That's why in the actual game black didn't capture the pawn, black just played knight to b8. And Carlson here played another tricky move. Although, like, computer says that the strongest for white is simply to castle, but Carlson played pawn h3, inviting black to finally capture this pawn on g2. Which black did, because other than that, you know, other options doesn't seem very appealing for black anyway. You know, if the queen goes, let's say, for h5, it's nearly trapped there. At some point, white may go g4, and, and, and you know, the queen may be trapped there. Not right now, but in the future. So, instead of this, uh, black played queen takes g2, for probably hoping for rook coming here to g1, which, you know, and the game goes on, but suddenly Carlson plays rook h2, and it turns out that the queen is trapped, so as early as move 11, it's time for black to resign. So let me know what do you think. Do you think Carlson secretly watches our dirty opening traps? I'm curious to know. If you are excited about this gambit and you want to use it yourself in your own games, there is one more line that you gotta know. After you play pawn b4, your opponents are getting captured here, then you play pawn to d4, threatening pawn d5, and your opponents will usually try to block that with their own pawn by playing pawn to d5 themselves. Now we already know that we take here, and then we gain a tempo by playing pawn c4. We already have seen uh, disastrous consequences of black just moving their queen away. That allows you to just play d5 and keep attacking basically for free, just one little pawn is nothing for such a strong attack. But a more principled way for black here after pawn c4 is to take on pawn, pawn takes c3. Now you recapture attacking the queen. If queen goes away somewhere, you know, back, you're gonna still play d5, attack this knight and gain one more tempo. So the only decent response for black is queen a5, trying to counter attack this knight. And here you've got a completely out of this world move, rook to b1. I mean, Someone said that a wise person knows when to play dumb, and that really a great characteristics of white 
play here. So in the opening, you sacrifice the pawn, playing a seemingly weird move, but it somehow gained you this strange attack. And now, once again, you're kind of overlooking Black's obvious threat and just give the knight away for no reason, just, you know, playing the rook move on the semi-open file like there is no threat here. So black will definitely capture here, and after bishop d2 attacking the queen, the only way out is queen a3, but you keep attacking pawn d5, and again, somehow strangely enough, this entire weird variation works together really well, and black's position is really critical now. Although black can hold it with proper play, but in most cases they don't know how to do it, they just move their knight away, and notice that these forward squares are controlled by you, the bishop also cuts off that direction, and so they're usually gonna move it back, knight b8, and that is already a losing mistake. You've got another strange move, queen c2, and this little move creates big threats. The first big threat is queen takes c8, checkmate, and the second one is bishop b4, which captures this queen on a3. And if black plays the move bishop d7, which is the most common way that black responds, which, you know, moves the bishop away and potentially prepares the queen to escape through the square a4, you know, because now bishop supports it, you've got another cool move, bishop b5, which finishes things off. Bishop b5 renews both threats. First, bishop to b4 is still a major threat, you know, trapping the queen and just winning it. And secondly, if black does something, for example, knight of 6 or whatever, you've got another threat that your opponents are highly likely to overlook, which is simply queen c8 checkmate. Funnily enough, that's how most games ending, are ending up in this variation. Black just overlooked that the bishop is pinned and is not in fact controlling this square because, you know, it's pinned down to the king. So queen c8 is clearly a checkmate in one. I'll provide links to my older videos about this uh, opening variation in the description below the video. Also, I'll link over here my newer video where I go more in depth and analyze some other sub variations of this opening. Also, if you want to level up your chess overall, you're free to attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Wishing you all the best. Talk soon. Take care.